ladies, germs, and those that matter. Sunday night, and that could only mean one thing. It's time for some three wide racing, baby. We got the three wide racing league coming at you with the Drive 4SP Sprint Car Series. USA Speedway. We're going dirt. It's happening, and it's happening right now. In the booth tonight, we got Matt Kingston. We got Trey Landry. We got Thomas Morris. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, Mr. James. All right, Matt, Trey, we, uh, we saw an exciting battle last week with uh, Cameron Rich coming home with a win. Surprise, surprise, guess who's top of the board in practice so far? Yeah, same guy who was battling with Cameron Rich, Peter Short, uh, uh, both top of the boards tonight. So should be fun. It's a great way, great race last week. So I expect there to be some great racing tonight as well. I would think so too, Trey. Here it's a little bit different than uh, Volusia we had last week. We were having to use a little bit of break to get into the corner. So see how that plays into the effect of uh, these guys around the track. Break in a sprint car? Ooh, I don't know. I do it anyway. I don't know if you're supposed to. Anybody in chat that knows if you should, let me know. I don't know how many sprint car drivers we have in chat, but uh, yeah, it's um, uh, gonna be a different feel. Like you said, I don't, I don't foresee maybe as much side by side battling in the corner here, just like you said, Matt, because of the difference of the uh, well, just the track in general because of the brakes and maybe more of a slide jump effect here than actual side by side racing. Yeah, it'll definitely increase the chances for excitement tonight because there's going to be a lot of close battling, especially, like you said, can't be side by side. So you have to get into the corner hard and get out even harder and slide up in front of that guy to make a move, I'd imagine. I don't know if you guys have noticed, uh, there's already a distinct groove built into the track from practice. So uh, it almost looks like it's a one-lane racetrack for right now. I know they're still playing around with, I believe, the track states as well, Trey, trying to find the a better uh, usage than we saw last week where they wanted a little more a little more of the track to come in than we saw last week. So I think that's still something they're trying to play around with. And this is only the second uh, round for the Dirt Series here, the three-wide three wide racing league drive for SP. So I'm sure by the end of it, we'll, uh, we'll always see some good two-groove uh, racetracks and great racing. Without a doubt. Looks like we have 14 vehicles here tonight. Uh, Going to do our two heat races. Uh, first heat will be the inside row. Second heat will be the outside row. We saw um, saw actually a lot of bit of, a lot of bit a little bit of action in the uh, heats last week, guys. A little side by side and uh, some guys pushing the limits, I guess you'd say. Yeah, the heats are. Uh... Anybody that's just tuning in now, the heats are to, uh, if we have over 20 cars, you can't, we can't run over 20. So if there's 21, then one person will be sitting out. So it was the last in the heats, I believe, is how it runs, correct, uh, Thomas Dre? Yeah, so to answer your question, Matt, we got Matt Hackathorn in chat. He says, don't need too much break. Just pitch it and send it. Oh, oh and our uh, favorite track bunny jessica siemens in the chat she says uh good luck tonight babe number 17 and i'm actually here with him tonight so hi well she's there with him she better not be too much of a distraction he might get himself in trouble she might see a different side of him maybe if something doesn't go his way but he might uh, feel a little bit heated she might see his undercarriage oh Although I don't think there's much to see in a sprint car, so. Oh, he's a skid plate or something. Most likely. Yeah, this... speaking of, speaking of uh, skid plates, uh, <laughs> oh. congr congratulations to uh, Ryan Blaney tonight. How about the end of that race, guys? That was uh, something I like to see. Like the big Penske fan here, so I'm happy to see one of the uh, Trey, you Penske, Penske, Penske group cars uh, taking a victory lane, especially Ryan Blaney with his first uh, cup win. Yes, uh, nice to see that uh, iconic 21 car back in victory lane. Uh, even though Br uh, Kyle Busch was driving like a douche at the end of the race, uh, <laughs> glad he was able to uh, overcome that. It was uh, an exciting finish. What do you mean, Trey? You're supposed to drive them down to the inside wall, aren't you? Yeah, that's, that's what Dale what did. They say. Yeah, that's how that turned out. 
Now, I tell you what, he wouldn't pull that crap with uh, Kevin Harvick. No, I don't think Harvick would have uh, given so much. I think he would have just stayed no. there and let him come off his front end. Harvick give? <laughs> oh, so Matt said he'd love to join us. He doesn't get uh, that much time to spend with his daughter. I don't blame you, Matt. Uh, family time's important time. You enjoy that baby girl. Put her up in your lap. Uh, this should be some good racing tonight. Yeah, I, we're hoping, Trey. We're hoping we can see uh, half a good of shows we did last week, and it'll be pretty entertaining. So, uh, like I said, these dirt tracks are kind of going to be, you know, entertaining to see how it all shakes out because we're not sure how these cars and the drivers are going to interact with the uh, with the different tracks. That looks like uh, Carlos Acosta is taking that drive for SP uh, pace truck out on the speedway to start lining these guys up for heat number one. Nice looking pace truck there. It's a nice looking Chevy Silverado. Another thing we should mention before we uh, roll off here, because I believe we still have to get gridded up in the back stretch. Do we? I should check before I start babbling on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 24 hour of Le Mans was last night. Yesterday and the last night. You mean the eye racing one? Yeah, not the real one. Well, that was uh, interesting. So, anybody that participated in that, I'm sure uh, you wish it didn't at the end of it. Well, I know uh, <laughs> you guys uh, brought home the car P4 in your split. So, uh, good job, Thomas. Uh, Matt, I know uh, fellow broadcaster, you've heard him here before. Thomas Fredericks is part of that team. So, uh, OCR TV, well represented last night in the uh, Le Mans. Yeah, except I tried to flip myself over out the front of an Ford GT, but that's for <laughs> a story for another day. Yeah, that was... Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you've, you've been anywhere on the forums on iRacing, you you know what went down in that event, so we'll just let that sort itself out. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh-uh. Looks like Carlos has uh, finally... Parked on the back stretch here to get them all lined up. Should be uh, pretty clean heats, I would assume, guys, right? Because you're only going to split them in half here with only 14 cars. It shouldn't be a whole lot of shenanigans. Shouldn't be, yeah. Uh... Well, the, uh... you wouldn't think so. Well, yeah, I mean, you never know. But 15 laps, I do believe, once again, and uh, your top five get points, if I remember correctly from last week. So that makes them a little more important, even though no one gets yes. to go home tonight. That's right, I forgot about the points, too, because uh, you can make up a little pretty good amount of ground by winning heats or just running well in heats and running a good race. Speaking of points, where's Fredericks? Uh, said he wouldn't make it here. He's probably still recovering from his uh, forte at Le Mans. Oh, God. His hair got out of place, I'm sure. Yeah, my nerves left my body before I got in the car on that one. <laughs> Looking in the chat here, Kyle Hanshaw says, let's get it on, boys. Cam and I are about to put on a show. I'm sure you as well. You guys ran well at uh, Volusia, so let's do her again. Yeah, he's, he's really quick, and we've seen him on... Uh... On the Twitters, as the older people like to say, uh, we've seen him pretty pumped up about his car, so I think he's probably going to be another another contender this week. Well, I tell you, uh, not only Cal Hanshaw, but I think another sleeper is uh, Wade Lear in that 03. He showed a lot of speed last week, too. Just got caught up in somebody else's mess and didn't get it. <laughs> you oh. see there, Kyle Hanshaw <laughs> had trouble getting started. Just like uh, the last dirt race I did, we all kind of just got to a parking lot and on the front stretch. Yeah, you got to remember what you're in here. You got to give it a little bit of gas to get going to make your uh, turn. Otherwise, you'll end up uh, in the infield care center before you even get going. So, it looks like your first heat will consist of uh, Cameron Rich, Kyle Henshaw, uh, Drew Eisenman, Sam Close, David Wilson, uh, Rusty Webb, Nathan Young will be your first heat. And as you mentioned, uh, what two laps of pacing that, sir? Yeah, I do believe. And as you mentioned, Trey Wade Larry was strong uh, last weekend at uh, Volusia, so I couldn't imagine why he 
wouldn't be contending for a win here tonight because he's showing speed. The virtual light's going to go off on the <laughs> Drive for SP uh, Chevy Silverado. Let's get just a good, uh, just as good safety lights as the official pace truck. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, we mentioned it. Uh, we did last week, but uh, this week the caution laps don't count in these heats, so uh, hopefully we can keep it clean and green and not have to worry about that. All right, Thomas, I think they're getting ready to go green. And Carlos is going to pull that pace truck down into a uh, pit lane, wherever that is here at USA. Looks like it's pretty far along in the corner. Going to hand it over to uh, Blue Cameron Rich, who took the outside here. And we are green. Ooh, Rusty Webb into the outside wall. Ooh, got a little bit hairy there on that stairs. Cameron Rich way up there. Way up the hill. Rusty Webb's climbed the fence. Slow now coming out of turn two. He gets it back going. Oh, gosh. Still green, we're hearing. So. Cameron Rich, that big move to take the lead there. Yeah, we Kyle. thought he maybe messed up a little bit, but he seems to... Oh, well, 46 is going to get him there, though, Matt. Kyle Hanshaw's looking good down there around the bottom, but the 17 gets a giant run up off these corners, so... Think we do a good run on the bottom. He should be able to slide back up. Ooh, we pushed up a little bit there. It's still going to work out. And Cameron Rich with a big run coming underneath him again. Almost like some classic dirt racing. That's what makes these events so fun to call because it's just constantly something going on. We got Sam Close trying to get in this picture as well, working that high lane. Because they're side by side. It's David Wilson and Drew Eisman back there, side by side. They already proved us wrong, Thomas. <laughs> well, that's what we're here for, right? Okay, I'm going to split up a bit there. That Sam Close might get the lead here this time off of third and three. Yeah, Four. A little bubble for the 46 there. Definitely hurt his momentum as the five's going to turn roll the outside. He's rocking the MSI uh, sprint car there. Looks good, too. Yeah, so stealthy, as he is your new leader. Welcome back here, guys. Drew Eisenman's running that uh, like kind of slick uh, dried out patch there in the middle of the track. That last time around, he's moved up to the high side. Now, Cameron Mitchell to the wall. Keeps her going. A little nerf there. Ooh, 46 had to get way out of the gas there, not to push up into the five. That was going to cost him possibly another spot. David Wilson showing some muscle here. Pushes uh, Kyle Hanshaw out of the way for the second position. I don't believe we mentioned it, but I believe David Wilson is the guy who runs uh, the Oculus in these races. That would just be insane. Yeah. Boogie has the Twitch. I don't know if he would give us a shout out to that when he was uh, in chat one night or not, but it uh, definitely check that out too. It's probably going to be pretty crazy in these cars. But also awesome at the same time. That'd be enough to make me nauseous, I think. Looks like these guys are getting. trying to get the bottom lane to work here, but they get the run off and just can't carry that momentum and have to check up and not run into that guy, and it just kills everything they have. Yeah, those guys running the top up against that cushion, man. They just getting that big run. As David Wilson's looking to get a little racing with Sam Close, see if he dives down low here going into the turn. He's flat flying there. He's gonna, oh, I like what he moved. What the movie did there, go hide. And, ooh, didn't work. Ooh, didn't carry it off though. Time to go this time, boys. Time to go. See if David Wilson can uh, find a little bit. He's got up to him, but it's hard to pass. So. Trying to make it work. Oh. You don't Let's want to rub him up work. in the heat, I yeah. guess. 
Oh, Sam Poe's made a bit of a mistake, I think. I don't know if he can carry it, though. Just, as long as it looks like as long as they keep that wheel out of the wall, they uh, can keep the momentum up. Especially Dude, in 1 and 2. Wilson slowed down. Oh, he's out, oh, of, yeah. gas. out of gas. Played it a little too, uh, too close there. These are 15 lap heats. Uh, you still need over half a tank to get through, counting the pace laps. So. Man, he was in good shape to win too. So that's why he was so fast, boys. So I'm yeah. guessing he never got out of his car once practice was over. Uh, possibly, as we're coming to two to go this time. But maybe he didn't fill it all the way. Well, no, you can't change the fuel, can you? No. No, you'd have to run it and then wait, and maybe that was his plan, but he just cut her a little bit too uh, close. Ah, I guess you can't change fuel. White flag comes out this time here. Sam Post has got her in hand, I think. It's interesting. We'll follow up with that maybe later on. Kyle Hanshaw gave it his all there in uh, turn three. Slid up just a little bit in the middle. Check your flag. Enough, though. Sam Close scores the uh, first heat win of the night. Looks like it's uh, Sam Close, Cal Hanshaw, Drew Eisenman, and Cameron Rich. Some good racing, guys. I mean, it's... That was very entertaining to watch. And rounding out that uh, field of this heat was Nathan Young and yeah, Russell Webb and fit. David yeah. Wilson. Bear with us. There's uh, no official timing, so you have to find your own uh, people here. So even with that little uh, miscue we saw from Kevin Rich there, he's still uh, managed fourth fourth place points in the uh, first heat. So not bad. No, he's last week's winner, and I believe he won his heat last week too. So good points. Just keep building on them. Looking at the chat here, Jess Lindberger, Lineberger. Go Kyle Hanshaw with a hurt. So I guess we found out... That much, anyway, from what he said last week. <laughs> well, it, well, it is Pride Week. <laughs> Sounds like even uh, in the chat, there, even the thirty-nine wasn't sure what happened. He thought he reset right. his vehicle, but uh, maybe he didn't. Looks like they're getting everything settled from the first heat here and gonna get them lined up for the second heat here in a minute. Well, that was uh, more entertaining than I thought, boys. Uh, proved us wrong already, like Matt said. The uh, grooves came in uh, rather, rather early. Yeah, they did, and this track's already worn out from uh, practice, and it's looking to get even wider here, so I think this next heat's going to be really interesting. Still looks like that top that top line was the way to go. Uh, we saw Sam close right up against that cushion, was able to power it through and uh, hold off those challengers at the, uh, at the end there. I was looking there in the top of turn three, I believe, Trey. It looks like it's getting real worn down, so that might not be the groove. They'll get it for the first bit, but it, if they keep wearing it like that, it might turn back down to the bottom. If it was turn three, I can't remember where I was watching. I know it looked like in uh, one and two, they were kind of running out of track. They're always uh, almost all up against the wall already, so not going to be anywhere left to run up there. The official time there from... The official, it was uh, five minutes and four seconds for that first heat. That's that's moving around this place. Yeah, it's uh, some great racing, too. Uh, no cautions. Uh, a lot of side-by-side -side close racing. So uh, hats off to these guys for putting on a good show so far. So, oh, go ahead, Matt. 
NASCAR fan 3312 says, hey, how you doing, man? Hope you're enjoying this dirt racing here at USA Speedway. I want to put that in perspective, boys. If that 15 laps was done in, what'd you say, Matt, five minutes? Yeah, five minutes and four seconds. is what The whole mean. race is only 40 laps. So if you don't get up front, you're going to be in for a uh, hard hard race to try and get up there because you're not going to have much time to get up there at all. Twelve and a half minutes. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's booking. All right, let's see. So your starting grid for Heat 2 will be Peter Short, Wade Lear, Jeffrey Acree, uh, Richard Hines, Corey Lindsay, who will not be partaking as uh, he had to do some adulting, uh, Paul Ross going to roll off in the uh, second heat, and Mike Stevens will be the last car in this heat. Yeah, I think uh, I think the car to look at is uh, at 03 of Wade Lear. I'll have to agree with you there, Trey. He was strong last week, and I'm, I know he's going to be strong this week. Uh, he's going to have to get by the old short man there. So you see, he's going to have to make short work of that 33 car. Well, he can't be waiting around. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you can't be sitting on the pit box trying to leer your way, uh, what to leer at the best line. <laughs> I totally <laughs> jumped the shark there. Oh, boy. We've already gone off the rails. All right, Carlos is going to, uh, Hand it over to uh, Peter Short here. And see if we can get another clean and green race here. Who did choose that outside line? He's gone. Wade wow, Lear's going to follow him. Wade Lear missed that by yeah. a country mile. I think the big advantage for Heat 2 is you got to see Heat 1. So you kind of know what worked and what didn't. So you definitely try and use that to your advantage here. Wadler's already trying to make up some ground here. Richard Hines right now is in the second position behind uh, our leader, Peter Short. I know one thing they probably all learned. Make sure you reset your car. Yeah, sure. Jeffrey Creed just got it to the wall just a little bit on the exit of the corner there. Still rocking under fourth. The, uh... Oh, not anymore. Yep. Power got it to the wall oh, again. Uh, he's off the track. No caution yet. No one's calling for one. I'm going to stay green here. Looks Look at like this. that uh, razor machine was just on razor's edge there, Matt. <laughs> they were for sure. Richard Hines here. Fucking, uh, looking to try to believe in Peter Short. He's not staying behind anymore. That was terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, try again. I got to retry later in the race. It's kind of a civilized out a little bit, I guess you'd say. It's not quite as wild at the start here. These guys clearly have seen what happened and they went straight to the high side and said, no, we'll just ride around for a bit. I think all the cars are still on track will score points for this heat, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. I think the only one that was in debate would have been Jeffrey, but uh, it's like that thing's probably done for the heat. We got 10 to go, guys. 10 to go, and uh, I'm pretty sure Peter Short's saying it. Is it 10 or 5? Let's go ahead and chop it down. I know, right? Welcome to Richard Hines back down at 87 machine. He's kind of searching around a little bit, trying to find something. He went back to the high so side that that three. Yeah, that 03 is inching in. He's slowly closing the gap, but he's going to run out of time here if he don't uh, get after it. Look how dark that corner is there, guys. You can see it probably perfectly with the <laughs> oh, yeah. cameras Wendell brings out here. It's just black as pitch. I do like uh, the difference you can already see, though. These guys are getting out of that practice groove. We saw a lot of guys running there just trying to push it further and further up, which will be interesting to see what it does uh, once we start a race. It's a little bobble from the 03 there. Once yeah. they reset the track to 40% usage, it's going to change uh, how you start this race again. Yeah, that 03 tried that low line there, and that just didn't work. He lost a lot of ground to uh, Richard Hines. 
speaking of ground, looks like uh, Peter Short has uh, decided he. Oh, as he say that he gets a little bit of loose at a four there. I say it looks like he's left the field, but if he keeps doing that, they're going to close back in. Yeah, he's back in. They're back into the pitcher. Yeah, he didn't have a good turn one and two after that mistake. So see if he can regather it here in three and four. It looks to be a little bit low there, guys. I don't know. Maybe it's working all right. Oh, hard, 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 yeah. I guess sprint car, you just keep it running, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not like those indie cars. You hit the outside wall with him, your day's done. It's just a flesh wound. Oh, as a little birdie told me today, his name's Trey Landry. Maybe it's made of cardboard like the Ford GT. Oh, yeah. To which I would have told you, it's a Ford, so, yep. Just inside five to go here now. On up to three to go this time, I believe. And Richard Hines doesn't appear to be gaining any ground right now. And leader Peter Short. No, it looks like these battles have kind of stabilized, but you know that's the nature of a heat race. Sometimes you hit it, sometimes you don't. But the good news is we'll rack them all back together for the uh, main show here. We have 14 car or 13 cars, sorry, starting the uh, main, so things will get real crazy there, I imagine. And they get to run a qualifying lap. Yeah, so you still get to uh, determine your position here, starting position. Paul Ross got into the wall just a little bit there on the exit. I love when they get the wall, they climb, they just start climbing the wall. Excuse me, that was Paul Ross. I'm kind of. I would kind of be curious to see if they didn't reset the track, how bad it would get in the race. It'd kind of be fun to watch that, I think. Because they're, they're running out of room up top. You're only going to be able to go to the wall so much. So it, it would change, definitely change the way the race plays out. Well, the checkered flag is in the air. So Peter Short will claim uh, heat win number two. Or heat two that win. Was, uh, that was uh, wire to wire there for Peter. That was a good run. We got Peter Short, Richard Hines, Wade Lear, Paul Ross, and as you said, Matt, everyone who's on track, including Mike Stevens, gets points. Look in the chat here, guys. The gaming slug says that pace car is beautiful. The drive for SP owner. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm glad uh Trade and Paints did its job this week and got it got it uh got it where we could see it. Last week it didn't want to load for us. All right, looks like we're heading straight into qualifying, boys. Fast pace night tonight. I know our, pro our producer loves it when it's hot and fast. Without a doubt. Which is why he hates Subway, because it's cold and fast. Ooh. Big fan of Jimmy John's, though. I don't have one around here. I've never eaten one before. I've never seen one. Matt knows we've been eating that French hard bread all week, so... Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's not very good there in uh, Le Mans, especially when you don't want to speak French. All right, looks like we got cars out there turning laps. Uh, as we've said before, it's uh, pretty fast paced around here, so you see a lot of times pop up on the board in a heartbeat. I'm watching the 03 here right now. I'm looking for him to maybe get the pole and try to steal a win here tonight. He's fast. You just got to put it all together. Definitely looks like the middle to bottom is the way to go in qualifying I've seen so far. Wade Lear hits a flyer there with a 21 one one eight and Kyle Hanshaw 987, a 19 987. Said, take your flyer, I'll take that. You can see how much the times increase from when you have a pretty well fresh track. It's not fresh, but it's newer than uh, what we saw in the heats. Oh, Peter Short with a 947. I see these guys like to end in sevens. Nine four seven, <laughs> nine eight seven, zero three seven, zero eight seven. Yeah, one more seven. Ah, uh, six. Come on, Paul Ross. God, <sighs> ruins everything. Still, uh, still slowed down quite a bit from practice, though. Yeah. Peter Short had a nineteen eight nine three. I guess he wanted to make sure that uh, he got the win this week. Or at least put himself in contention to get the win. 
Well, I don't. I believe the track was fresh when we got on it in practice, and it's used, I think, in qualifying, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's forty uh, percent. So that's probably what's slowing them down a little bit. I think the biggest, well, I was gonna say disappointment. Looks like you get a better lap in there. Cameron Rich pops up in five, but still, uh, not what you want when you're the leader in practice. Yeah. Of course, we saw him pass some cars last week, so I'm sure he can do it again. As all 13 uh, vehicles have taken time. Looks like we have, what's that, less than a second? Oh, yeah, definitely less than a second now. Separating the entire field. That's pretty good for our second turn event here. I don't know about you guys, but I love this dirt track race. And it's uh, big into the driver's hands. And if you get a good feeling for the track, you have a great chance to win. It doesn't matter what you're driving. Yeah, I don't, uh, what's my train of thought there? Oh, I was going to say, I'm, I like the dirt racing. I'm not a particularly huge fan of this track. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it is uh, not, not one of my favorite tracks. Tarmac I, or dirt. Yeah, I agree with you there, Thomas. It's uh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's in Florida, so, you know. It's kind of one of those things. Florida tracks are, yeah. What about Sebring? Uh, Homestead. Well, Sebring's like one of the rare gems. Looks like everyone's uh, turned in all their queue ups there. That pit lane looks very interesting to get on. Fortunately, you won't be seeing it. Uh, won't see that being used very often in a dirt side because there's no pit stops for tires or fuel. So uh, most times when you head down pit lanes, because you're done for the day or you get shot down there by a on track accident or something. I think an important lesson we learned last week was don't hit the starter on these cars or the ignition and right. kill it because if you do, there is no starter to get you back going in. So. I'll never understand why all cars have no starters. <laughs> or sorry, all, some, some cars don't have starters. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess the uh, call savings, etc. blah, blah, blah. Our producer wait. says wait, but uh, if they all carry them, it's the same weight. So, If you mandate starters to all of cars, just like you mandate everything else in racing nowadays. And then this, that would cause uh, countless cautions to not take 15 hours. The producer doesn't understand that, you know, sometimes cautions don't need to take 15 laps because you weren't smart enough to figure out your cars need starters. Our, our, I just know our producer's awfully mouthy tonight. Mouthy or Yeah, he's getting like that. You know, it's probably yeah. his time of the month. Same. Let's just pills come in here. <laughs> Let's see if these lights work tonight, guys. And Frederick's to make some of his coffee. Oh. I don't speak that admin, so I don't know what that would be. A bunch of gibberish. We do have the bilingual admin tonight, so. Well, we don't have the SAP button on your remote like ESPN, so. All right. Looks like we might do the grid when we're ready here. Let's see. Takes a while for everybody to jump in their cars and find their spot here. Oh, right. Rolling off P1. We have the short man himself, Peter Short. Going to roll him off on the grid here, P1. And outside of him, Kyle Henshaw looking to steal that dirt win this week. Right behind them, we have the 77, Drew Eisman starting in third position. And the 87, and Richard Hines looks already in the first heat. Second heat, see if we can do it in the main, starting P4. 
And starting P5, we got that 17 car, Cameron Rich. And uh, starting right beside him in the number five, Sam Close. Rolling off P7, we have uh, Paul Rawls. And outside of him, Wade Lear, who looked once again sporty in uh, his heat. Starting in the ninth position, we have the 63 of Mike Stevens. And in the tenth spot, we have the 21, Nathan Young. Somebody who looked really sporty but forgot to reset his car during the heats was uh, that 39, David Wilson, starting P11. Rusty Webb starting P12. And shotgun on the field, Jeffrey Cree, who uh, did not have the best first heat. Uh, so maybe he can rebound from that and surprise us when they uh, drive from the back of the field here, boys. I would be shocked. Yeah, it looks like it's been pretty tough to make uh, passes, so we'll see. See so what we can get down here tonight. As the official, official Chevy pace truck here is going to lead him around, picking for two laps. I believe so. We've got a full, uh, full crowd in the grandstands of the 2D people. <laughs> I see a couple 3D people. Yeah, they slam a couple of them in there, just as placeholders, I think. You know, something's going to bring down those frame rates just a little bit. Well, we did it last week, boys. Should we do it again? Uh, who's your money on? I'm looking at that five of Sam Close. He was quick in, the, in the, his heat, and we'll see if he can uh, steal another victory here as he did in the cup cars, I believe. Not here. On their respective tracks. Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say Kyle. Not very far though. I'm gonna say Kyle Hanshaw, number 46. I'll go out on the big limb. I'll say Richard Hines is gonna steal one here. He's gonna take advantage of maybe some shenanigans and get a victory. All right, pace truck's gonna pull off, and Peter Short's gonna get the jump here. Nice start there, but he's rolling smooth. Heisman didn't have the best of starts there. Probably going to have to roll the bottom to get caught up. Ooh, Sam Close, close the into the wall. Damn it, that was my pick. Yep, <laughs> see? Long way to go. Sorry, Sam, that's probably my fault. So we got Cameron Rich trying to make the move on Richard Hines there. Kyle Hanshaw, ooh, almost made contact with Peter Short. Woo. Had a big check up there, not to get into him. Reisman might be trying to get uh, Kyle Hans under attack here. He's looking down low on him, see if we can make that bottom line roll a little bit better than the top. We thought about it, just couldn't slide up in front of him, though. So Kevin Rich did get around Richard Hines. They're going to set his sights on uh, Drew Eisman on the outside. You see that line that Cameron's running? He's right there, right up against that grass. Make it a work. Yeah, it's uh, got to go where you can. Uh, go where you can try to find that speed. Yeah, it's like right now that uh, that bottom line is the uh, way to go. It's looking like it. Maybe an uh, update on Sam Close there. He just pounded the wall. I'm gonna say he's at the back of the field. It looks like he's gonna be done for the day on that one. Also done for the day. The 21 Nathan Young takes his sprint care behind the wall. We also have the 88 around on the track as well. Around around where Sam Close was. Looks like Rusty Webb went for a yeah, went for a little wall ride there in turn one. He definitely had the nap uh, know how to climb that fence. Oh man, when he got into it too, it was probably be some pretty catastrophic damage. I would say at the least some toe damage, if I was a guessing man there. Believe he's gonna be scored one lap down after that event, also. Oh yeah. man, that thing don't look too hot coming down the straightaway. That might be the least of his worries. I think he might be done for the night after that one. Uh, like Sam Close also had to toe, so that's probably gonna be it for him. That's not the way you want your car to be facing, I don't think. Going down the straightaways, unfortunately. No, I don't believe so. 
So, boys, looking ahead, uh, what do we got tomorrow night? Oh, boy, what Ooh. do we have? We have it's a howitzer. Uh, fighter jets in a stadium, I think is what it's been called. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Cup Cars at Five Flags Speedway, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, going to be entertaining, to say the least. Yeah, you thought this was exciting. I can't wait to see that tomorrow night. I don't even know what to expect. I know we're going to see side-by-side -side racing. We're going to see beating and banging. We're going to see typical short track stuff. But cup cars on a tiny little track like that, it's its, uh, it's just going to be entertaining. That's all I can say. It's going to be pretty easy to uh, make a mistake and take out about half the field. I uh, Yeah. You know, iRacing doesn't even have a fixed setup. This is a fixed setup league. So, uh, have you guys heard what are these guys uh, running setup wise? I believe one was made, from what Ooh. I've heard. Stand by on that. I'll get my facts straight. I don't remember the email. I don't know if I checked that one or not on the setup. But uh, they usually do a pretty good job of making one. So, I'm sure someone's tweaked around on some short track setup to get it halfway decent. I mean, it is a cup car tray. It's never going to be good. So. Yeah, right. Yes, there is one created. One was made for uh, Five Flag Speedway. So if you're not a fan of dirt, but you like short tracks, then come back tomorrow night and see uh, maybe one of the oddest pairings we've seen yet here at Three Wide, Three Wide with a cup car and a tiny, tiny little short track. It'll be exciting. Just like this restart's going to be as the pace truck pulls off of uh, the speedway. Hand back to the hands of Peter Short, and he gets another good jump. Cameron Rich was ripping back there. He's trying to find a way to get through it thing, get a good start. Drew Eisman to the bottom, trying to get around Kyle. Not going to work, though. High side just carries way too much momentum for those guys to get any kind of run-up off. Yeah, you start to see that line migrate to the top again. I tell you, if the, ooh, that was close. Wow, he shut the door on him. Move there. I guess shutting the door would be uh, the play away. He slammed it on uh, Drew there. Yeah, Wade Lear trying to uh, make the move around Cameron Rich. Didn't get it done that time. Going to the outside this time. Cameron Rich trying that bottom. I think the bottom will work, guys, if you just have enough room to get up off the corner. But it seems like whenever somebody goes to the bottom trying to make a move, they hold them down tight, which is uh, all uh, all's fair. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Pinch them down, you're good to go. And last mistakes made, then you're both off. Well, then you just flip and move on. Just ask uh, Tony. I thought you were going other places, but... Ah, that's for, that's for another day. That's a good... I've been way up the hill there, going to allow Cameron Rich to get underneath him. I haven't been able to complete the pass yet. No, Drew got way wide there. Yeah, it's a little too high there for that 77. Playing with the limits of grip there, boys. David Wilson back there, car number 38 or 39. Sorry, starting to make his way up a little bit. He's right behind Wade Lear now, fighting him for the fifth position. He said, "Hey, don't forget about me. I put fuel in it this time." <laughs> <laughs> it's fast with the fuel in it too, so that's good to see. Rising, we got into that corner there, three and four. A little bit dirty. He's going to be real close to the wall yeah. next. Oh, we're going to battle for the lead here. Kyle Hanshaw looking low on Peter Short. Peter just moving him room. Going to be a tough pass to make here. I like seeing this. Hanshaw back there. He's just searching up and down the track, trying to find the right amount of grip. Well, as you know, man, it changes every lap, so uh, you got to move around and see what you can find. It's real fun when bumps start to form, like we saw last week of Volusia. Your Ooh. car pretty much takes up off the ground. I don't think these guys ever see those again. Rusty Webb's taking it behind the wall. I don't know if you've mentioned that also, the 88 car. He's one of the three retirements so far. Along with uh, Nathan Young, as you said, and uh, Sam Close, looks like he's done. Well, looks like that battle kind of slowed down there. 
Maybe the 46 used his stuff up trying to get to him. And by stealth, I mean lines. Yeah, it's not hard to uh, destroy the line that you're on, especially if there's a couple other cars running it also, then that makes it a search again. So you're, not, you're not really racing other cars here on dirt. You're mainly racing the track. Peter Short goes back to the bottom that time. Cameron Rich is lapping quicker than our leader, Peter Short, right now, back in the third position. I know he's hoping for a caution. He's trying to close the gap up a little bit. We're uh, halfway this time. Well, a 7.02 to a 7.10. You're going to need more than that. In that lap, they hit 60s up front. So, as you said, Matt, it depends on your line. You can be Superman or you can be uh, Superwoman. I didn't really have anywhere to go with that one. Yeah, I was wondering where, I was wondering where we were going to go. I don't know who's the villain, Lex Luthor? Maybe, I don't know, I don't want Where's Eric Me? You. David Wilson, up and low here, Wade Lear for the fifth position. Side by side here in the back straight. Dave lets him go there and tries to get a better entry into the corner. It's kind of hard we have a shallow entry because you need that room to swing out. Yeah, you definitely don't want to enter those corners straight or you're going to just plow an entry. I like the entry that he had there. He might be able to get him. Ah, no, Can't get the run up. Back off. Behind him there. Almost looks like these guys are going to go in low, slide up and kind of scare that guy on the outside to maybe jump out of the throttle and kind of let you by. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to get a, get around them too easy. Yeah, that's the thing here. It's real hard to make these passes. Like we saw Volusia, it's a little bit easier. You have a little bit more playroom in here. Just the way the corner's there. It's kind of like Williams Grove. It's pretty, except Williams Grove's a really technical track from what I've experienced. Yeah, you're kind of hoping that guy pushes up a little too wide, like we saw maybe in a Drew Eisman earlier. And just, just get up that high, you kind of lose all that momentum. It's not hard to make those mistakes either, Thomas, because it's so line dependent. If you're off by just a half a tire mark, you might have trouble. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, we got the 17 trying to make a run on um, the 46 here, heading to three. Got a good run through one and two. Not sure if he can carry it through three and four, though. I see Cameron's running that select spot. It seems to be working for him. He's not losing any ground, and he's not really gaining too much either since he got off to the back bumper. But ooh, he's been good. Well, we heard that last week, Matt. We thought, oh, that, that's a terrible place to run. Then we listened to him in interviews, and they're like, no, that's a pretty good place to run. So uh, maybe they've done a little tweaking on the old uh, slick patches and giving, giving yourself a little more grip. This is 77. Just about busted his uh, butt off for four there. Peter Short's pulled out to a commanding lead now, almost two seconds over the second place car, 46, Kyle Hanshaw. I believe he's found his uh, groove down on the bottom. Looks like he's just hugging that bottom, especially through three and four and pulling away. We saw it last week, Thomas, it was uh, a 1-2. Cameron Rich in front, Peter Short in second. Can uh, Cameron get by Kyle Hanjai in the closing 10 laps to uh, make it another 1-2? Just reverse order. This is going to be another uh, three rock series where these two battle it out each week. Uh, I think Kyle Hanshaw, make sure he gets his nose in that. He's quick every week here on Dirt. He likes Dirt. He's... Uh, express that at everywhere. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. So, I think we'll see that 46 in victory lane before too long. Without a doubt, he's done. Definitely racking up some good, uh, solid finishes to build himself into the championship contender he wants to be. I'm sure. Looks like not a whole lot of home track battles going on right now. Everyone's kind of settled in other than uh, second, third, and fourth trying to settle it here. It's like to me, boys, uh, unlike last week, this has been a hard track to pass on, so I think that's uh, part of the reason why we're seeing these guys get strung out. For sure, because it's real... It's not going to say easy, but it's a lot easier to get to the back... Uh, back buyers of somebody as opposed to actually stepping out and making that move because you need that room to slide up when you're in the bottom. I mean, we see it the same on asphalt tracks as well. 
just because you can run faster on the bottom doesn't mean you can get around that guy. You, you need all the track to make it work, and uh, dirt's no different. Actually, probably a little bit tougher since uh, you may not actually get the car pointed in the uh, direction you want coming off the corner. Coming down a five to go here as Peter Short crosses the line. He's saying, uh, please stay green here because I don't want any late race restart drama. can tell you, uh, Jeffrey Cree has managed to stay in this race, boys. No, uh, no major incidents or drama, so he's rocking P8 right now. That's what you gotta do, just click away, keep getting, uh, positions, and, or keep getting points, sorry, and you'll be, uh, in good shape for this championship battle. Yeah, somebody can stop the 17 and 33. That's true. Richard Hines rolling P7 right now, just, uh, you know, been calm, steady all day, hadn't really, uh, ruffled any feathers. Yeah, you got David Wilson's crew finally decided to put gas in that car. He, he's moved up from uh, 11th to 6th. I was hearing, Trey, that the gas can was lost. Somebody may have stolen it from the garage area. Oh, man. Yeah, did they let the mongers around that again? I think so. They needed to They needed to get the shipping for Corey's pedals, I believe. Oh, he's trying to uh, find a way to get shipped around Wade Lear here, see if he can pick up P5 in the closing laps. Actually, two to go this time, so... Flag man with white flag in hand for Peter Short. Yeah, he's making it look easy tonight, boys. <laughs> yeah, he made short work of these guys for sure. <laughs> oh, it never gets old. I know. All right, here he comes out of four. Peter Short going to uh, win here at USA Speedway. Bridesmaid last week to the. Not bridesmaid this week. The winner this week? <laughs> yeah, winner, winner, chicken that. dinner? Yeah, let's just go with that. And Kyle Henshaw does hang on to P2, so that's a solid performance for that team. Uh, Cameron Rich comes on P3. Drew Eisman P4, and rounding out the top five, Wade Lear. So uh, solid runs by those guys. Well, there you see it. Peter Short led every lap, I think, tonight. Yes, he did. Wire to wire, yeah. I believe he did that in his heat also, did he Did he not? Yes, he did. Uh, a little uh, uh, foreshadowing. Perfect little uh, little evening for him tonight. Couldn't get it better, honestly. Oh, he's doing burnouts. I didn't think, didn't think that was that easy in these cars. Please do the grass. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> <Lord>. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Calling a uh, tow truck, please, front straight away. If you get somebody in victory circle. Just get your team out there to give a little push. Well, that's one way to do it. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> my. It's thousands upon thousands of dollars of damage. I think we're just ripping up the track now. He's going to try to get it flipped, maybe. No, he didn't hit it right. <laughs> this is entertaining. This is like farming simulator. It's like Matt trying to plow a field. <laughs> Kind of curious uh, if he can get it flipped or not. Uh, no, he, he, he gave, gave up. up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was, I'm feeling bad. I'm very little chance of success. Well, I guess we should uh, do that interview thing, boys. We do. So get her done. Hop on to the uh, team speaker. What an exciting race that was, guys. Yeah, without a doubt. Just good, hard, clean racing. That's really all you could ask for here, especially in the Drive for SP uh, Dirt Series. It's fantastic to see how guys can hang on to this, especially at a track as tough as USA. Yeah, I think that's uh, what led into what you saw tonight, USA being so tough. All right, guys, I got him. He qualified fifth. Uh, ended up finishing the main third. Kevin Rich, uh, tell us about your race tonight, man. Uh, my heat uh, didn't go so well because the driver died to hit the wall, so uh, that wasn't too good. But uh, the main was pretty fun. It was really hard to pass, and uh, I, th I thought the track would progress a little bit more than it did because we started at 40%, I want to say, this week, as opposed to 30 last week. But, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. I had a 
it was frustrating as hell to try to get around the 46 there at the end, but it was pretty fun. Yeah, we saw uh, all night long, like the top side just kept that momentum rolling. Uh, you maybe could have made the bottom work if you wanted to be, uh, what's, what's the word, not just aggressive, but kind of forceful and moving guy up the hill. We know it's kind of early in the dirt season to kind of make that kind of enemy. Was that kind of going through people's heads maybe tonight? Just couldn't complete it cleanly, so you just had to work as hard as you could to get that bottom line uh, maybe worked in more. Yeah, I mean, the bottom was, uh, it was the line to be throughout the main. Um, actually, it, it felt like the the, bottom, or the line moved down, you know, the speed moved down as the race went on, because I, I saw Peter there at the end was like almost clipping the grass, and I was too. Probably a little bit of my frustration trying to get, get around Kyle there, but um, uh, I, there just wasn't any speed up in the high side, uh, you know, when you when I needed it there in the main event. Um, I don't know if it was just, uh, just the track not having enough usage or the car, probably a little bit of both. It's just uh, need a little bit more horsepower, I'd say. But I mean, it was fun. It was fun to drive. You know, and even even just driving a dirt car is like fun. All right, Cameron. Before we let you go, give us those shout outs, man. Ah, uh, well, first off, I want to thank the series sponsor, the Drive for Suicide Prevention. As always, great cause. Everybody should go check them out because uh, it's pretty cool. I think it's like a kind of a first of the kind in the sim racing community. I want to say that kind of a. Uh, activism I, I want to say um thank you guys for broadcasting us every week because it's pretty cool that y'all put up with us and three wide racing for uh putting on everything and my girlfriend for being my number one fan and uh number one ocr fan all right cameron we thank you look forward to seeing you tomorrow night five flags in the cup car oh hell yeah Home race for me, so it'll be pretty cool. I guess that should uh, probably we should probably know where Five Flags is. This, I, yeah, I got it. yeah, it's somewhere down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. He called second. He finished second. He was my pick to bring it home, but he came up just a little short to that thirty-three car. Kyle Hanshaw, tell us about your race, bud. Uh, it went fairly smooth tonight. Um, uh, I'm getting close. <laughs> Last week, what, we finished third, now second. Hopefully next week we can get the W. But, uh, yeah, Peter was uh, pretty fast uh, all night long. Um, I didn't really have anything for him. I tried the bottom uh, a couple times in one and two. But, uh, yeah, it just didn't work out that way. Uh, anything you think you could have done could have done different tonight to maybe be more aggressive, maybe make the outside come in a little sooner, work the groove in, anything like that in this uh, dirt season? We haven't seen, a, you know, it's only the second race here we've seen on dirt, so we're not sure if you guys can maybe influence with uh, where you run, how the track can come in or anything like that. Uh, my car was good on the bottom in one and two. I can really dive it down in there and... Um... Going into three and four, I had to stay higher because my car was horrible on the bottom. And um, it it was like that all throughout practice and qualifying and whatnot. So I just had to switch it up during the race. But uh, I think these guys got a pretty good idea of how these cars drive. Um, I'm surprised, you know, with it being the second race of the season and all. Um I think at Eldora, when we go to Eldora, uh, that outside line is going to be um, the line to be in uh, for sure. But, yeah, the track uh, definitely changed um, pretty much uh, all throughout the night. I was happy about that. Uh, it was slicking off real good, and uh, you really had to, you know, pedal it through the corners and stuff, uh, which was cool. Well, Kyle, I mentioned in the race, I'm sure we'll see you in victory lane here before too long. So um, what do you think, if you continued the track state as it was from the heats onto the race, would that provide better racing, or what's your thoughts on that? Uh, it'd only be 
way harder to drive. Um, it probably slick off from bottom to top uh, in the corners. So uh, guys would have to definitely, you know, work the throttle and steer the car with the throttle um, all race long. Uh, I think right now what they started at is pretty good. Uh, we've been trying to, you know, figure that out for the past couple of weeks uh, with all the practice sessions we've had and uh, the races and stuff. Been tweaking a couple things, but I think uh, what they started it out with tonight, it uh, turned out pretty good. The racing was fairly decent all throughout the field. Heat and feature. All right, Kyle. I have no doubt that we're going to be talking to you as the winner here in the Dirt Series before too long. Uh, a lot of talent behind the wheel, man. It's, uh, again, you guys put on a great show. And uh, before I let you go, uh, give us those shout outs. All right. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, have a good night, and we'll, we'll see you next week. I love those uh, internet gremlins. Yes. All right, bring him in here. He knows He knows how this works, Trey. Yeah, we talked to him a lot. Started on pole, led wire to wire, 40 laps. Uh, that number 33 car, Peter Short, uh, had it going on tonight, Peter. Tell us about your race, bud. Man, I had a lot of fun tonight. At the, uh, the number 33 Eisen Designs car was rocking and rolling down there on the low line. And that's where you had to be tonight. You had to be able to roll that low line and kind of get out of the gas enough just so the car would hook up down there. And I think you all kind of saw the track move downwards, and I kept having to inch closer and closer to that inside wall. I kind of got scared there with a few laps and almost put it in the outside wall because I, I didn't want to hit that inside wall so bad. So... All in all, a great race, a lot of fun. You know, we kept it clean. I was a little bit concerned about fuel. Um, I know Cameron had done a fuel run in a practice, and I think he had ran out at 39 laps. So I was a little bit concerned with that. And we had done a preseason race here, and um, I think I ended up with two laps left of fuel in that race, even with a caution or two. So tonight, I think under every pace lap, and under every caution lap, I was clutching it, trying to save fuel, make sure we had enough for the end. And uh, I think at the end, we ended up with like four or five sh uh, good. And so that didn't really factor in, but was definitely in the back of my mind the whole race. And definitely just tried to save a little bit of fuel, rolled out of it a little bit earlier than I normally would. And I think that played to my advantage because that low line was just so slick. But if you could just hook that very bottom line, it, it was fast. And we were able to uh, pull away from Hanshaw. I know we had some great side-by-side -side racing. There was one time when Hanshaw, man, he was he was going in there really deep. And he, at one point, he just took me by surprise. And I think he had to back out of it. I didn't really want to chop down on him if, if he was down there at that point in the race. I didn't want to take us both out. But I, I just didn't realize he was there. And I came down, and I oh, we almost touched. And, you know, that's just one of the natures of, of this dirt racing. I think we're all kind of getting used to it. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, absolutely, I'm ecstatic that, that we get to do it, and and for the 40 lap race, we run a full tank of fuel and hope for the best kind of thing. It's the longest race we can run, and I, I think all around it, it kind of tests our endurance and longevity because with these cars being sideways every lap, it you know it's pretty easy to to make a mistake or get a little bit sideways and scrub off too much speed. So it's a lot of fun, and and tonight, uh, luckily I was able to get out in front and and get that clean air. Wow, he pretty much covered everything I, I wanted. Right yeah, there. I I don't yeah. even think I can make another question after that. Man, <laughs> Man you, you guys, how hard they were, and you were just like, yeah, it's hard, pretty easy to make you guys, a mistake. You guys asked me to tell you know y'all about the yeah, race, so I did. Sure. <laughs> it's perfect, <laughs> and you did. So uh, again, uh, no stranger to the to victory lane here at uh, three wide, uh, Peter. You know the deal. Before we let you go, give us those shout outs, brother. Uh, I want to thank Drew. You know, he he painted up my car tonight. And I've got eyes and designs on the car. Uh, you know, Drew's a fantastic artist, and he can paint you up a car that looks absolutely awesome. So he's definitely done that with with my car, and I think we might even be getting a, a scheme here uh, in a, in a few weeks. I know he's been really busy, but you know, thanks to Drew and and thanks to everyone really for for racing clean. I know Hanshaw side by side had a lot of fun with him. So. 
uh, we'll keep it clean and, and hopefully we can get a lot of green flag lots in, in this third season. All right, Peter. Well, we appreciate it. Congratulations again on the win. I'm sure it won't be your last. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Well, it's pretty hard, guys. I know anywhere to run wire to wire in one race, let alone the heat and another race leading. Yeah, what he he led like what's that fifty five total? Yeah, fifty five out of fifty five laps. So well, we just... always we always knew in the back of our head that it's a possibility though, because you know it's it's new. So if someone hits on it, they can just pretty much walk away with it. Definitely, I guess one of those tracks just kind of suited his style. So, uh, hats off to him. Without a doubt, like I said, Trey, no stranger to victory lane. So. Uh... Sure, we'll see him there a couple more times. Hopefully, we'll see a variety of winners in the uh, Dirt Series. Without a doubt. We have two different winners in two races, Thomas, right now. Woo! That's not uh, not too shabby as well. Uh, I think we're going to take a little break next Sunday from the Dirt. We'll be back to the B car, but that's that's next Sunday, boys. Let's let's get them all hyped up for tomorrow night because we've got we've got short track hype. We've got the Cup car at Five Flags. You want to be there for this one because it's uh it's gonna be something you don't want to miss. It's it's hard to even explain. It's such a such a crazy little short track. A lot of a lot of turning involved. Uh, not not many straightaways to get the car settled. And uh, we all know how much uh, the Cup car likes to jump out on corner exits. So it should uh, should be quite the show. Something I know I've never seen, and it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, alrighty. I guess that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight from uh, USA Speedway. For Trey Landry, Matt Kingston, our lovely producer, Wendell James, who has gotten his pills and his coffee, apparently. Uh, I'm Thomas Morris, and we will see you tomorrow night at uh, Five Flags. Bye. See ya! There we go.